Hey guys, it's Capitalash from Tech World, and today we're going to be parting out a $700 budget gaming PC. Now, the main purpose of this will be for gaming, but today I'm also going to show you how you can part a PC for your needs, specifically. Now, the reason I'm choosing around the $700 um, range is because I think $700 has a lot of value to offer in terms of price and performance. You can really get some really good performance nowadays for a very low price in the gaming PC market. So without further ado, let's get to it. So as you can see, I'm using PC Part Picker to choose my components. Um, if you're near a micro center and you want to use the micro center custom PC builder, go for it. I'm all for that. Um, or if you have some other software that you would like to use to pick your parts, go for it. Um, I'm just using PC Part Picker because it's a very well-known choice and, I re and it's helped me do my own PC builds before. So first we have to start with our CPU. So let's look at the choices that um, PC Part Picker offers. So we do have a Ryzen 5 3600. Um, preferably I would go for a 1600 AF just because that is a really good price to performance uh, component. Um, but as you can see here, um, it's selling for around $142.38. So I don't think that's a good option. And besides, I want to take advantage of B550 so that we get um, so that we get forward compatibility so we can upgrade down the line and like take out a CPU, put a new CPU in. So yes, B550 does offer forward compatibility and that's one of the things I really want for this build. If you're a video editor, um, you might want to look for a CPU with high core and thread counts, but if you're a gamer, I think a quad core will do just fine. Um, and because the main um, objective of this is uh, gaming, I'll look for um, one of the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X processors. They're super, super good. 3100 is better than Intel Core i7 7700K and that retails for about $400 used and the 3100 retails for about $100 so let's look for those so I do have a 3300X over here which is $200 that is way overpriced considering that AMD released it at 130 so let's look for a 3100 $187.20. For that price, I could just get a Ryzen 5 3600 that's actually cheap less than that. It's actually priced less than that, sorry. So, consider Ryzen our uh, platform of choice today. Um, it has 6 cores, 12 threads. Let's go for it. Okay. Okay, so next we have to choose our motherboard. Oh, and the reason I'm skipping the CPU cooler is because um, the Ryzen 5 3600 already comes with the stock CPU cooler that's actually not bad. So we'll just use that cooler and we'll go onto the motherboard. Like I said, I do want to take advantage of B550 for forward compatibility. Um, so let's choose AMD B550 chipset. Um, and let's see our choices. Lowest priced. Okay, so we have a B550M DS3H. Um, this is actually a successor to the B450 MDS 3H, and as I can see, it's priced a little bit more than that. So the B450 MDS 3H went for 73 bucks. This is going for 95. So what? About um, an 18 dollar difference, I think, if my math is right. Yeah, whatever. But somewhere around that. Okay. But that's not bad. And I'd definitely uh, pay 18 dollars more or something for um, forward compatibility. And as we can see, this motherboard is actually pretty good. It does have um, some advanced features as well, like BIOS flashback. And for $95, this is a really good board. So I'm going to choose this one. Okay, so now let's choose our memory. Um, for memory, I would like to look for something that's around 16 gigs. Um, it has to be running in dual channel. Um, otherwise, you get literally half the memory bandwidth, which is not good. Um, so I think 16 gigs is a sweet spot for price to performance. Um, it offers a little bit of um, future proofing and it's really a sweet spot for many gamers and video editors nowadays. But that being said, if you do want something higher than that for something like, I don't know, 
if you're going to be video editing or doing CAD work or something like that, then by all means go for something like 32 gigs or 64 gigs um, if your motherboard supports it. So let's choose our memory. And because we're going with Ryzen, Ryzen favors um, high memory speeds, and 3600 is right around the sweet spot for that. But 3600 kits are becoming so hard to find nowadays at a reasonable price point. So therefore, I think 3200 is a sweet spot, and what, you're probably going to be losing about 2% to 3% performance, but you're going to be saving about 20 to 30 bucks. And in my opinion, that is a very reasonable choice. So let's choose DDR4, 3200, and let's go for two 8 gig sticks so we can run a dual channel. Um, okay, so when we find the lowest price, um, we get a G-Skill Aegis 16 gig kit. Well, mind you, this is not the most um, handsome looking kit, not handsome, beautiful looking kit. Um, it has a lot of design, it's not minimalistic whatsoever, like you want dims to be, but these kits are known to overclock really well. For example, look at this, it says, um, successfully overclocked to 3533 megahertz. That's nearly 3600. So, I mean, this is really, really, um, uh, this is a really, really uh, good kit for the money. So, let's go with this one. So, now let's choose storage. So, in terms of storage, you're always going to want some sort of SSD in a modern system nowadays. I don't care what your price point is, but always include an SSD. Reason being, if you have a hard drive, it, you're going to take about 20 seconds at minimum to boot into Windows. That is not good whatsoever. Have an SSD, boot into Windows quickly, and get your tasks done more efficiently. So we will be including an SSD for this build. Um, I would preferably like to have an M.2 NVMe SSD, but those are a little bit more expensive um, versus a regular SATA Rev 3 6 gigabit per second um, SSD. The difference between the two is that um, SATA 6 gig per second SSDs are generally like you'll usually see about 600 megabits per second on them um, in terms of reads and writes, whereas on M.2 NVMEs, you get nearly about 1.5 um, gigabit per second reads and writes on them, sequential. So let's, I'm going to try to see if we can fit an NVMe SSD into here, but if not, um, it's definitely fine to go down to um, a SATA 6 gigabit per second SSD, because having an SSD is better than not having an SSD at all. Um, unless your SSD doesn't have a DRAM cache. Okay, so let's try NVMe, yes. Um, SSD type, capacity 500 gigs. I'm going to be going for 500 gigs um, if you want something more than that because you're going to be pulling um, 4K files off of an SSD or something like that. Um, definitely go for it. And also with B550 comes PCI Express Gen 4 support. Now, th a lot of people won't be able to take advantage of that much speed, but if you are going to be pulling files off of um, an SSD and you want to do quick transfers, then by all means, go ahead. Um, go splurge on a B PCI Express Gen 4 SSD um, with NVMe. So, let's look at this. Okay, so we have a crucial P1, 500 gig, for 60 bucks. I think that's a good price point. Let's choose that. And for additional storage, let's go for a Seagate Barracuda Compute. Um, this is one of the more priced performance hard drives out there, but it still offers pretty good performance. So um, let's choose that. And it's two terabytes as well, meaning you could dump all of your games onto there, um, especially with modern titles being even 100 gigabytes to download. So I think this is a pretty good option for gamers. So now let's choose the most important part of any build, the graphics card. So there are many graphics cards out there on the on the market. Sorry, my mouth is slipping. Um, but there are many graphics cards out there on the market right now, um, and a lot of them are very good choices. Um, I think a really good graphics card for our build would be a 1660 Super or a 1660 Ti, um, just because it's going to pair really nicely with our 3600. There's not going to be any bottlenecks. Um, Preferably, I would like an RTX 2060 Super, but then again, where do we have the budget for that? Um, but still, a 1660 Super is going to be a really nice card for the money. It's going to play most games at 1080p. 
Um, I just think it's a very solid card. So let's try to fit one of those into our build. And if that's not possible, we'll go down to a 1650 super, which is also a very respectable card. Um, that can also run a lot of games at 1080p um, high, but and it, all, and it can also play a lot of games at 1080p low. Um, but those are both really good cards for their money. So without further ado, let's find a graphics card. So here we have a 1660 super for 239.84. So let's choose 1660 super in the filters. Um, is there anything else we want to choose? No. Okay. So now let's find the lowest price 1660 super. Okay. So that is coming to around 230 bucks. Okay. Let's add that. And by the way, if you're going to be um, having, uh, if you're going to be doing video editing or CAD work or something like that, um, for CAD work, I would recommend a Quadro RTX. Yes, it's going to be expensive, but a Quadro RTX is extremely good at CAD work. It's basically meant for those engineers um, who are developing homes um, and who are doing CAD work on a regular basis. So if you're going to be doing CAD work, then go for a Quadro RTX. If you're going to be video editing, at 1080p, this is a really good card. However, if you're going to be editing 4K or 8K video, I suggest you step it up. Um, if you're going to be doing 4K, preferably get an RTX 2070 at minimum, and 8K RTX 2080 Super or, RK, or RTX 2080 Ti. Um, yes, they're ex expensive graphics cards, but they're definitely worth their money. So now let's move on to the next component, the case. Now the case is really about your choice of style and flair, but some cases do include um, additional features like USB-C um, and tempered glass side panels. Now considering that we're on a tight budget, um, I really don't think that we're, uh, that we're in the market for a tempered glass side panel right now, but that being said, we'll definitely try to fit some aesthetic into here. But do keep in mind we are going to uh, prioritize um, performance over aesthetics, given the price point. So now let's choose our case. So I am uh, right now we're doing micro ATX. Actually, no, it all it automatically applies the compatibility filters. So let's see. So I mean, I think we can just choose the lowest price case out here, as long as it's good enough. Don't just choose the lowest price components. Do as they say, not as they do. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, the Thermaltake Versa H17 is a pretty good case. Definitely not the best on airflow, but, I mean, it does have a closed side panel. Oh, look, it has a power supply shroud. Yeah, this is a pretty good case for the money. Okay, let's go with this one. Okay, so now we go on to our last component, the power supply. This is an area that you do not want to skimp on. I repeat. This is an area where you do not want to skimp on. Reason being, if your power supply is bad, there are chances of it exploding and ruining the rest of your components. Okay? It's not worth to save about, I don't know, $10 and lose $700 worth of components. That being said, we'll choose a very good power supply. Um, I prefer. I prefer something that's at least 80 plus, if not 80 plus bronze. I'm going to be looking for something that's 80 plus bronze. But most importantly, it should have good ratings, okay? And it should be from a manufacturer that you trust. And it, ha and it should have the amount of wattage to support your components. So as you can see, we ha we're running about 294 watts from our components here. So we have to choose a power supply that supports that. Um, you get something that's a little bit higher than what your wattage is so that you can do upgrades down the line or let's say if you want to do overclocking um, you want something that's a little bit um, that has a little bit of a higher wattage so that it can support all of your components so let's see we're running 294 watts so in that I would probably get something about a 450 watt power supply maybe um, Okay, so wattage 450 watts, and I'm going to be looking for something that's at least 80 plus bronze, just because that's what I trust. So, okay, here we go. Cougar VTE. Okay, I don't like 
I, I mean, I, I've never heard that Cougar makes power supplies, but I'm not willing to take a risk on that. So let's go down. Sea Sonic S12.3. Okay, Sea Sonic is very, very reputed in the power supply market, and um, they just make really good power supplies as a whole. Um, and being that this is 80 plus bronze and it has okay ratings, I'm willing to get this one. And it's also pretty cheap as well, so, yeah. I don't know why. Add that. Come on. Okay, so now that we have our build complete, let's see our final price, shall we? 766.42. Okay. Okay, so we do have to make some compromises given the high price tag but that can be done. First, I recommend you compromise on the aesthetic components. And as good as RGB is, it's not really that necessary. We don't have any RGB on here. We have the bare minimum case, right? So I think um, the first thing to compromise on is the um, NVMe SSD. So strictly speaking, if you wanna have it, then definitely keep it. It's gonna give you um, um, a little bit more performance compared to a regular 6 gig per second SSD, but a regular SSD isn't that bad either. It's perfectly fine for booting from Windows, for booting into Windows. Um, it's perfectly fine to keep your files on that SSD. It's not gonna be that much of a performance penalty. And having an SSD is better than not having an SSD at all. So first let's swap that out with a regular SATA 6 gig per second SSD. And I'm going to be looking for something around the 4 and 8 gig range, be just because for a gamer, they can uh, dump their most uh, their most accessed um, games on that SSD, and they can dump all the games that they don't access that much on the two terabyte hard drive. Um, that way they can loot. That way they can load. Sorry, into their games faster. So let's look for something around 480 gigs, and I want it to be an SSD. So lowest price. Okay, so we do have some pretty good offerings here. Um, a 480 gig SSD for about 49 bucks. Um, but if we spend just three dollars more, um, we're getting 32 gigs in in capacity. And I think it's worth the upgrade. So let's go for that. And um, next thing we'll do. I don't want to compromise on the power supply. That's definitely something you should not compromise on. I repeat, do not compromise on the power supply. Okay? So, I mean, there's not much else to compromise on. Even if we were to switch this out, we would not save that much. Um, for like about a one terabyte drive, we would not save that much and we would like we would lose a lot of storage. So let's, I mean, let's switch out the graphics card. Um, 60, 1660 Super is a pretty good card. Um, we're rocking, sorry, we're rocking out some 5842 right now. Um, 1660 Super is an okay card, but um, I think a 1650 Super will do us just fine as well. Um, and if you guys don't know about the 1650 Super, it can play a lot of games at 1080p high. Um, and if it can't do that, then it can play them at 1080p low, if not 720p high. Um, and I think that's also a really good price to performance card. And I think I last saw it at around 170 bucks. I don't know. Let's look. So video card. Let's see, 1650 super. And the reason I'm not going with the 1660. The performance gains from a 1650 Super to a 1660 are just not worth it for the price. Um, if you're going to be looking at, a, looking at it from a value standpoint, I think a 1650 Super is the best um, GPU um, in the budget segment right now. So price, uh, okay, so we have a decently rated uh, Asus Tough Gaming OC 1650 Super, and I think this is also a low profile card. Yeah, this is one of the low profile cards. Um, this is a pretty good card, so let's put this at, into our build. And look at that, we're at 698.42. Um, there's really not much we can do with the two $2 difference. Hey guys, it's Caplash during editing, and I know you might you guys might be a little bit angry about me compromising on the GPU. However, I have came to the rescue and I have a solution for you. 
So, you know how I said um, that a quad core will be perfectly fine for a gamer because most games are GPU dependent nowadays? Um, this, do this will require a little bit of compromising, but if you were to step down to a, a budget B450 motherboard, like a B450 MD S3H that I previously mentioned and cost about 73 bucks, and replace the 3600 with a 2600, you're going to be looking at roughly around the same price. This might be a good option, however you are going to lose out on some of the forward compatibility features that I talked about earlier. However, if you can find a Ryzen 3 3100 or 3300X processor for a decent price, then I would highly recommend that you get those processors. That way you can have a decent gaming performance now, while still maintaining the forward compatibility with B550, so you can upgrade your CPU down the line. With that being said, I'll give the spotlight back to Kapolesh in the video, and let's go on. Okay, so as you can see, we are nearing our budget, 698.42. And for $700, I think this is a really good PC build. Um, Ryzen 5 3600, solid CPU, very good bang for the buck CPU. Um, B550M DS3H, one of the cheaper B550 motherboards, but still very respectable. Um, DDR4-3200 memory, yes, it's not 3600, but 3600 kits are very, very high priced right now, and you're not going to be uh, getting that much of a performance penalty by going 3200. And this kit can also be, is also known to overclock very, very well. So, um, next, then a 512 gig SSD plus a 2 terabyte hard drive, GTX 1650 Super, um, this GPU is a really good GPU, I, I want to reiterate. Um, very good bang for the buck, better than the RX 580. Um, just a very solid option right now, um, even if it's not, uh, um, even if it is a budget CP, uh, GPU. Sorry. Um, and then Thermaltake Versa H17, also a pretty good case for the money, 45 bucks. What else are you going to get? You're getting a power supply shroud with that thing for your cable management. That's a huge plus at that price point. Um, and then a Seasonic S12 III. Amazing power supply brand. There's nothing more reliable than Seasonic. They make amazing power supplies. And I really think that this is an amazing build. So overall, this is our PC build. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment down below. Um, what would you have done to better improve this gaming PC build? I know that there's going to be a lot of controversy on the parts that I chose, especially the GPU. So if you have any tips on how I could improve at the art of picking PCs, um, leave them down below. Um, and like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.